I, what do I hear? It, we, we hear a lot, and there's a lot of drive, both within the private sector and, and the government, working towards inter-regional trade and intra-Africa trade. And our own, um, the Tony Lumlu Entrepreneurship Program, we just um, trained, mentored, and, and provided seed capital to 1,000 pan-African entrepreneurs from 54 African countries. The biggest thing that we've done is enable them to build intra-Africa business relationships through the online platform and the offline when we flew them all from 54 African countries to Lagos um, last July. Try going from one African country to another while staying in Africa. It's a huge challenge. So they're thinking Pan-Africa as a phenomenal um, economic market for their goods and services. There are 600 million young people of working age. They're not pessimistic. They are very optimistic. If I was a young African today in, in the so-called diaspora or in Europe or in America, I would look to going to Africa to bring my knowledge, my experience, and, and, and to help build um, and, and grow um, Africa economically and harnessing the innovation and the creativity and the technology and all our entrepreneurs 30% of our entrepreneurs are between the age of 21 and 37. And guess what business, which sector they are operating in? Agriculture. So a lot of young Africans see agriculture as a business opportunity. Um, so the, a lot of these, um, at the 54 African economies, are looking to build, rebuild and reformalize their economies by building an entrepreneurial class and a professional class that can drive that sustainable economic growth. The task for our entrepreneurs, the 1,000 and the, the next 1,000 that we've just selected for 2016, is very simple, create jobs and create wealth and make that social impact. Because it's job creators that Africa needs and not job seekers. Um, they're also talking about you know, moving from import um, dependency, which is what a lot of African economies, countries are dependent on, to import substitution. You know, imagine if you were able, you know, the amount of cars from Japan, India, etc., that are, that are currently to be found in, in Africa. Imagine if instead of coming completely built, that it was the parts that came, the number of jobs that you would create. In Uganda, I understand that $800 million are, 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 are they are supporting the Chinese economy by buying $800 million worth of imported goods, which goes to China. $1,900 million go to the Indian economy from just Uganda alone. And you can replicate that story from importation. So the key thing is to substitute um, importation substitution and then move for many of those African countries to also exporting. Africa has 60% of the world's arable land. There is no reason why there is poverty, food poverty in Africa. Um, and that requires really a long-term sustainable vision. A lot of the African business leaders, such as Mr. Tony Alumalu, are, are thinking long-term, not five years, not 10 years, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, in terms of what can they do as people who've made wealth in Africa, from Africans, how can they reinvest that? And how can they begin to develop the principles of development and growth that the multinational corporations, the development agencies, the donor agencies, these amazing multilateral banks, when they come to Africa and, and talk to African leaders, China is in, in Africa, obviously, in a big way, really supporting the, the building of its infrastructure. But how can they begin to think about long-term sustainability and not just what can my multinational corporation get as, as a fast buck out of, out of Africa? Um, I think so the mindset of those of us who are outside of Africa need to change in terms of the, the relationship, um, in, in, in terms of really a partnership that works towards that long-term sustainability. Thank you. Thank you, Danny.